to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, BX Zone, Lil TJ has made it back to the program. And he's all healed up. He's feeling good. Look, he's smiling. He's still got the smile. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> God bless. Yes, thank you. Shit got crazy. We ain't seen you since then. Yeah, it's been a little while. It's, so it's a blessing while. to see you here, bro. That was a scary. That felt real touch and go for a minute. Yeah, yeah. It was. It got crazy. Do you have you had a chance to whether it be through your album that's dropping today, uh, two two two? I, I you did drop a song. I know that kind of dealt with some of you know what you was going through. But do you feel like you've? Are you able to talk about it in that way, or is it still something that you kind of try to not get into because it's too triggering? This album right here is like one i start by saying like i really really like if you guys do have the time please listen to it you feel me yes. like top to bottom if you have the time it's like it's about my life i like i just vent about my life how i feel my mental space and all type of stuff like that so i am venting like probably to like the best of my ability on this album you know Good what for you, man. And, what is the meaning behind what's 222 um, all right, so my first album was named True to Myself. My second one was Destined to Win. And this is the third. Also, you feel me? I got shot on June 22nd, mm. 2022. Mm. And when I got shot, like, they put me in a helicopter. And the helicopter took me to the hospital. And the time they took off was 222. Mm. So I just named the album. Numbers now. Wow. That's the numbers now. Yeah. So the the incident went on in Jersey. Um, when I first met you, I want to say you was nine. How old are you now? Twenty three. I'm twenty two. Twenty two. So the first well, time we met, and, and when you kind of hit the scene, was you was what eighteen? I was I was like sixteen. Six, Might have met you around eighteen, but I was sixteen. You were sixteen when you yeah. first started, but then you had to yeah. you had got locked up, and then you came back out even as a young person. Like yes. you've been dealing with street shit for a minute. Yeah. Um. Is are the things that you know you're going through now still kind of carry over from growing up stuff, or is this new hate, new money, new hate? Honestly, I kind of like as as referring to like that situation. I really don't know what happened. It's like a blur. Like I just woke up and just could just remember just waking up and everything after that. So and I don't, I don't really know. Like I just know that in this world, it's like. I feel like everything happens for a reason. So I feel like kind of in a way, I kind of, I be trying to feel relaxed about it because I feel like if it was my time to go, it would have happened, you know? But it definitely still just be on my mind, you know? But it feels like something that just happened. It's not like you were able to come out of it and be like, oh, I know exactly what this was. This was that. This was just you went out for a night and the next thing you know, you're in a hospital. yeah. It makes it a little bit worse. Yeah, I can't yeah. tell if it makes it. I can't tell if it makes it better or worse. It like, makes it worse for sure. Because you just it's because it keeps you looking over your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, you don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, how are you moving different? <clears throat> um, I know, I know there was video that came out. You know, they caught you in the hood with something on you or claiming well, no, something. That, was can you explain? You. Are you allowed to explain that? Yeah. Um, I got there's like multiple situations that they've been just running in the press and stuff been going on in my life, but the last situation. I mean, I got locked up and my charge was having um, a, a fake gun. So that's just for me and, and itself. That's but you were shooting a music video. And I was shooting a music video, yeah. And it was a prop. Yeah. And you had an entire set. It was like a legit full video. A uh, full video. It was probably like $100,000. My whole label was there. <laughs> like, you know. And we had permits for certain things. And they still turned it into this whole... Yeah. Stay well, that just goes days. back to what I always talk about on the show is the the NYPD, police departments all around the country, LAPD, NYPD, the most uh, egregious with it, use these moments with artists who have a story or a story past to try to use marketing for themselves, right? Because then it looked like, oh, we dealing with the boom, boom, boom. So they, they use that to get themselves press in the paper when it ain't really nothing going on. Mm -hmm. So... um so now, um, what is the rumors of you and Ice Spice? That's Cap? That's not a real thing? Ice Ice is like, Ice, I mean, when when you say like real thing, as in what? Wait, Ebro, hold on. You well, no, they, there's they, a dating they, thing? 
Well, the, the internet said that you gave her some expensive jewelry and everybody said you was dating. And then obviously people probably, maybe they put that together because the song Gangsta Boo and y'all, you know, talking hood romantics to each other. You know what I'm saying? Hood so you saying Gangsta Boo is about TJ? I mean, he's... Nah, Ice, you know it's crazy. So I said it. Turned in, away like, crazy. My man. song, June 22nd. The look away was nuts. <laughs> I actually met. Ice. And y'all from the same borough. Yeah, she from she from across the street. Oh, so y'all been knowing each other? No. Ah. She okay. never came outside, so I don't know where she been at. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, like, like I met Ice the day before I got shot. Literally, wow. Literally the day before. I mean, she told me, like, yeah, you was lacking, da, da, da. you with your friends, da, da. like, for me, just joking, like, for me, like, you was moving crazy. But basically, like, I met the day before, like, even, like, you feel me there, like, where? So you still didn't answer that? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to say you, like, that, that's my friend. Okay, got it, got it. That's it. So it ain't nothing serious. Yeah. Y'all cool, exactly. y'all lived across the street from yeah. each other. It happens. People yeah. are just friendly. And, and, and the watch situation, I did buy a watch, it's true. For me, and that's like you feel me. It's on some welcome to New York. You know what I'm saying? Right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to welcome to you feel me. Hip hop and hip hop in New York. You know what I'm saying fellow you know what I'm saying? artists giving a fellow Listen, artist one. Nobody's gonna be mad at you. Yeah. There is no reason why you shouldn't be hollering at the eligible. You're an eligible. Nah, bachelor. nah, nah, nah. It's not hollering. That's what I'm trying to say. No, that's what I'm saying. But I'm like, saying if it was, me? I'm just saying if it was. <laughs> but it's yeah. really nice for him to be like, yo, another like someone from the Bronx. He's like yeah. a young person. I've been that getting I money. You getting money now? But let me. Uh huh. Give you a, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then after you guys, when did you guys record Gangsta Boo? We recorded Gangsta Boo like, it's crazy. We recorded Gangsta Boo like before like the whole big like Ice Spice wave even happened for real, for real. Like I heard months, he sent me months before he even came out. Like, you like this? I don't know. And you feel me? Oh, so you believed. You were like, yo, this is going to be fire. And honestly, like honestly, before that, like when I first had met her, I was trying to sign her. Me personally, I liked her. I tell her all the time, I liked her, like, better songs. Munch, I was like, eh. And Munch was the one that went. But, like, you feel me? The yeah, next but she song had other that, records Gangsta before that. Them love that. songs yeah, and other yeah, stuff that me? she had. Yeah. Munch was like, I was like, eh. But that shit, that's how I be. Like, honestly, my biggest records, I, like, I ain't like them as much as some of my other records. Right. You feel me? But she definitely, you know what I'm saying? Talented and all that. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Nobody would be mad, bro, if y'all was New York Ten. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Nobody you're, you're now you've become like your new role I've noticed recently <sighs> is like Jewish grandmother who wants to get people. You guys would be <laughs> you a guys nice would couple. make a great couple. <laughs> it's beautiful for What's the Bronx. Wrong? What and it's that? the fifty years of hip hop love in the wow, Bronx. But TJ's like, no, she's just my friend. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> she just lived across the street, bro. Relax. Yeah. <sighs> so see. so ISIS never came outside. Um but now she's she's a big deal. And speaking of 50 years of hip hop, um, and you being a, a newer artist, this is what your third album you said? Third, yes, album. third album. You've had tremendous success. Um, how does it feel as a Bronx representative? You feel like you're being appreciated in the city? Like, tell me the vibes that you're getting. I mean, I feel like honestly, like sometimes I be having to come up here for stuff like this. But to be real with you, I try my hardest to stay out of New York. Mm. I feel like like, a lot of, like, negative things happen in my life when I'm in New York. And every time I'm somewhere else, it's just, like... It's love. Yeah. Well, that's like, why a lot of a lot of big artists have moved out of New York because of that. Yeah. New and York is, New York could get crazy because you can't go to the places where you're used to going. But it's so crazy that I've been moved. And it's, like, I come to New York so rarely for the things that happen in New York to happen that it's, like, I almost, like, feel like I'm kind of cursed here or something. Like, I just almost want to ban it out of my life. But there's certain things like this that I have to do. Right, right, right. And, like, right now, I probably got, like, five, six securities downstairs, being real. Yeah. So just out of, you know, not taking any chances at all. Yeah. Do you have dreams I just recently interviewed Conway, who, you know, was famously shot years ago. Um, and I asked him about the dreams, and he still has dreams about it. It's been a long time. Do you Have you had dreams about it? Bro, dreams, every time I take a step, like a step like this, I look and I scan, and I think somebody about to try to hop out a car and blast me. Like, all day, every mm -hmm. day. Like, I got a bulletproof car, and I feel best when I lock the door. And sleep in that car, like you feel me. Sometimes I'll be wanting to just do that. I think you uh, have you gone and got therapy and like, I like what? I, I mean, you know, we talk. Everybody talk. Therapy is very popular to talk about now, but clearly, if somebody tried to murder you, right, and you live through it, and you're having the 
you know, triggering moments like you, like literally every step, like. Yeah, it feels like this is like the moment for therapy. Have you tried it? I never tried it. I used to, you know, it is, is that when I grew up, I was like kind of like a bad kid. So like they used to put me in like programs and talk to therapies and I tried it at that level of life, you know. And I used to be like, this person, no, no, what am I going to talk to this person about, you know? So I just like always looked at it as like, I'm the best person to feel me to analyze what's going on and deal with it from what well, I so know what's what, going what on. So what a therapist is, and we have this conversation a lot, therapy is not going to tell you what to feel. It's going to help you have tools on how to cope with what you're feeling. And these professionals, because they've done this for a long time, have talked to other people who are probably going through what you're going through and can help you kind of unpack this so you don't have to walk around and feel like you're going to get killed every step you take. Now, you feel what I'm saying? I feel you. But the thing is, I kind of feel like it might be just best to feel like that. Why? That is it for, for safety's sake? Just so you stay sharp? You mean you so want to stay sharp? I kind of feel like I moved to L.A., for like two years and I didn't and I left New York, you know? And I came back probably like within the two years, I probably came to New York like eight times. And like probably like three times something bad happened, maybe. And one of them was like me me getting locked up, right? And like stuff like that. Um I came back, I got shot, like all type of stuff. It's like, I don't know. I just lost my train of store on some fraud shit, cause I was trying to <laughs> like, but for real, like... Well, listen, you could still go to therapy, have it be helpful so you're not always worried about it, and still stay sharp. Like, no one's asking you to, like, get oh, a lot, you know. What I was going to say is, I lost my train of thought. When I came to New York, back from that two-year break, I felt like I got so used to living in L.A. Because to me, L.A. is, like, a little bit comfortable. I'm from New York, all this stuff going on. Yeah, well, not, not, not like that, but I kind of, like, knew how to live in the L.A. And I was chilling to where... It's like a little bit more you could be comfortable in L.A. And I put that same effect in New York and it didn't go good. I kind of think that's what happened. Felt like you mm. was too relaxed. Yeah. Right. L.A. And, relaxed And you was, and you was over in Jersey thinking that you was, yeah. you know, all good over there. Yeah. Sure. Um, I, I don't know. I just feel uh, compelled to, while I'm sitting here with you, and I've known you now for a few years, and we love supporting your music and we're proud of you. I just feel compelled as, as someone who is older to say, hey, if you get a moment to stop, if you get a moment to deal with this, this is not something that yeah. at 22 years old you want to carry until you're 42. 20 years from now. Imagine for the next, just even 20, and you're going to live to be 80, 100 years old. If you don't start at least getting towards uh, unpacking this, yeah. it's something that could really yeah. cause you problems later on. That's all I just yeah. wanted. I, I just heard, wanted to I make sure I said that to you. I heard a lot of times. I know I'm 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 gonna get in there. They, you you should. On your and time. you'll like it. And by the way, you'll like it. And if you go to see someone, I've been I'm in lots of therapy. You might go to one person and go like, ah. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. You might not like the first but one. I find the right person. Yeah, right. the first. You this might just like dating, bro. Yeah. You're gonna meet someone and be like, yo, this shit's trash. I yeah, don't like, want to talk to you no more. You'll say the energy. You think the energy's not good, and then you'll find the right one that'll feel good. We, you, but we shouldn't normalize it because like you going through that. That's not a normal experience. That's not experience. normal, bro. Yeah. That's a crazy experience, bro. Yeah. Even though I know you got a lot of homies, you know, been in and out of jail, you know what I'm saying, and dealt with shit. We all got friends we lost to gun violence and all that, family members, all that shit. So in our brains, it's like, yo, this is part yeah. of coming up. Yeah. It shouldn't be, and it's yeah. don't, don't, don't. It's like that for a lot of people. I know yeah. a lot of people feel like that. You feel yeah. me? Like it, it is what it is and all this other. experiences. Yeah, but you getting a couple of dollars in your pocket, yeah. you got luxuries that not everybody... Yeah. Has. So, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, exercise them. The album 222 out today. Lil TJ, who's on the project? I got Polo G. I got Killer Roy. I got Summer Walker. I got um, Coco Jones. Coco Ooh, Jones. That's a homie. I got Fabio Foreign. And I got Jada Kiss. Jada? Yeah. What made you reach out to Jada? Because he a legend. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Let's sure. play. What's the name of the Jada Kiss joint? You know I'm biased. It's called Hold Em All Heart. Hold my heart. Hold my heart. Let's play that joint. What's your other favorite on the album? You got another favorite? Um, honestly, today, today's today, favorite. Play that nobody. Nobody. Play that nobody. Okay. All right. Listen, Lil TJ's here. The album two two two. Uh, I know your streaming numbers go crazy. 
Um, how often are you putting out an album now? Once it was almost like once a year. Hey, nah, until the it's, setback, it's, right? It's, it's, it's been it's been two years since two the last years. one. Two I years. haven't barely dropped any music since. How much music you got in the stash that is going? Are you everything. gonna start like un unleashing now? Yeah, yeah, facts, facts. I'm about to be on my deal. I'm about to go crazy. Oh, word. Oh, so you now you gotta really go crazy. Are you gonna do another one? Depends. The bag is right. Depends. Yeah. The bag. Look at this guy. Yo, 22, man. 22. I can't believe you've been around. You feel like you've been around for a while. Already. He's got a lot Five of hits years. already. How many? Yeah. How many? Like radio hits have you had now? Like song going around on the radio all day. Especially, I mean, it's in New York. We play your shit probably more than any anywhere yeah. else, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure though. Really you really don't know. Don't so know. what? So when you look at like when the checks come in, how they come in quarterly? How do y'all get paid when y'all are the they, publisher? Because you got publisher too, right? Yeah, 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 facts, facts, facts. Like, what's the what's the what's the what's the record that delivers the most? Oh, we got oh, calling my phone, moose swings. Calling my phone, Call moose swings. Pop, um, pop out always go crazy. Pop, pop out, out has seven hundred fifty-seven million Spotify plays. Yeah. Calling my phone has six hundred fifty-six million Spotify plays. Yeah, right. Yeah. Up. FN has six hundred thirty-eight million. Yeah. FN crazy. Yeah, and and it's stress. The stress that just dropped today. This one gonna go. I know this one gonna go. It's Summer Walker. Bye. You was, yeah, and you getting all the big looks. Yeah. Now, are you writing for anyone else? Um, nah, 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 right now. Only but myself. are you like? Do people reach out to you like y'all? Because you got a little melody. You got hooks too. Yeah, nah, I never, I never really try writing for nobody. For real. I just be. Cooking up Keeping for yourself. The sauce. Yeah, fucking <laughs> sauce. <laughs> Lil TJ, go get it. Two, two, two is the project. It's great seeing you. Great you know, to we're see here you. for you, man. Yeah, man. Keep your head, it. keep your head clear, man. Thank you. Give Thank it up, you. Lil TJ, one time. Yeah, man. TJ.